Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please share the link and invite your friends. As you see, I'm not coming as much as before because I have a muscle injury and uh, I hope soon I will be able to sit uh, long on the chair as before. Uh, it just, you know, I was carrying very heavy stuff and it hurt me. So, uh, you know, I said, inshallah, and then Allah is going to fix it. Now, today our topic is about Israel and Hamas. As I expected a few days ago, I told you that, you know, uh, Netanyahu is a person I don't respect. And he's an idiot, he's a politician, he's a businessman. He is not a leader. And a leader cannot make a victory in anything. However, Hamas is claiming victory <clears throat> today because of the cease of, uh, uh, ceasefire. Before we start, I saw a comment with someone, his name, Stock Raising. He said, the Christian Prince, please, you should have realized by now that both US and Israel are evil power. That Israel, we know, now are cut off. We stand with God, not with those Babylonian nation. You know, the, the, the funny is, you said Babylonian nation. I don't know if you know the Bible or you are making things up now. Um, when somebody says that Israel is an evil power, what does that mean exactly? What, what Israel is doing exactly? <clears throat> you don't want them to exist? So if somebody says to you, I have the right to exist, you say to him, you're evil? And you have the right to put them in the oven and you burn them alive? Israel as a government is not my interest. As you see, I spoke against Netanyahu many times. I believe this man is a corrupt man, fake leader. But the Israeli people are people like everybody. So why for you, they are Babylonian and they are cut off? What does that mean? Secondly, when you say America is evil power. Well, America is evil when the leader is evil. America is good when the leader is good, as any country in the world. Actually, as long America is an evil power, so why America is going against Israel with Biden? If Israel is evil and America is evil, so why this Biden is putting pressure on Israel to stop and cease fire? Evil, they agree about everything. They don't oppose each other. Uh, I find it very, very uh, strange that there's somebody, he claimed to be Christian, he speak like a donkey. You know, the words I use like potato, donkeys, sometimes you have to use them. If the Bible say that this is the land of the Jews, who are you? Who are you exactly? If you open your Bible right now, what is going to say to you? Who is, who is the one, the Roman they put in the top of his cross, the king of the Jews? Do you know his name? I'm sure you do not know. So even the Roman, they knew that the Jews are people who they are exist there forever, and they are waiting for their king. So they were making fun of Jesus, saying the king of the Jews. And they stupid you until now you cannot read it. Same time, Israel is not only Jewish nation. There is Muslim, there is a Christians, there is Arab Christians, there is Palestinian Christians. There is atheist, there is gays, there is homosexual, there is all kinds of things. Who said to you that Israel is a state of certain group? Even they call it like a Jewish state. But in reality, it's not. It's not a Jewish state. You know, it's going to be a Jewish state, like all Islamic countries too. You know, like they say, the Islamic, uh, the Islamic state of Iran. But is everybody, everybody there is Islamic? No. In the same time, <clears throat> the problem with Israel the evil one you are saying now, that look, after throwing 3,000 rockets at them, they cease fire. You see how evil they are? <clears throat> and today my topic is about, not about this guy, those, those, those guys always, you see them in the way, and they claim to be Christians. A Christian person, he will say the truth, it doesn't matter, he speak about who? Israel, 
is the land of Israel and this is what your Bible say so if you claim to be Christian and you say there's no Israel you are a false Christian you are absolutely an idiot and you are a false person and please don't come here again you are not welcome all right and the funny is that I am an Arab person and I'm saying that Israel is the land of Israel I mean do you see the stupidity here I am the Arab not him and I am the one saying this is the land of the Jews anyway stupidity is always amazing so today uh, I, I saw in the news the ambassador of Israel uh, uh, Palestinian Christians they are real victim no nobody is against them the Palestinian Christians if they if they join terrorists then they are terrorists like them if they are not then they will live in peace you know you see the Israeli my friend they give even even Hamas they have their voice in the parliament they have now in Israel Islamic party in the parliament Islamic party in Israel do you, see, do you see how much freedom they are giving them so they say it's a Jewish state but there's Islamic Islamic party in Israel yes there is and they are members in the parliament too so uh, when you say Palestinian Christians I don't I cry for nobody I cry for nobody if you are a person you don't have rights simply because you give up your rights as an example Christians in the Middle East Muslims they came and occupied them why the Christian in the Middle East don't make revolution against the occupation of the Muslims the answer is very simple and I will give you some examples one day the Coptic Christians in Egypt who they are millions and millions of people they decide to make a revolution the church went against them can you believe it so we have people who claim to be bishops and people who claim to be people of God they use the teaching of God against the people they say oh Jesus taught peace oh Jesus says no, you don't go bless those who spread peace and so, suddenly the one who defend his land became a criminal and the one who want to defend and take his land back, he became an, uh, you know, a bad person, an evil person, like this guy who said the uh, 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 evil power. So each time the Middle Eastern Christian, they try to free themselves, the church go against them. Why? Because all those who are in the church, they are under the control of the Islamic Caliphate. All what they care for is to have a chair, a nice house, and good life and the people die who care now this is the same case for uh, you know for Netanyahu Netanyahu he want to be a leader he want to win election uh, by not going to war he don't want to go to war now that can be smart as an example like now in Gaza after all of this zero soldier die for the Israeli my guess there is soldier right if we look at the map you will find that from Israel there is 10 people died 10 people three of them they are not Israeli three of them are not Israeli one from South Africa one from India and I think uh, I forgot where is the third one and then there is other two or three they are Arab and they are Muslims so the total is what the total is not even four people from the Israeli in the other side, according to Hamas, there's 212 people die, and those are not Hamas members. Those are not Hamas, you know, people. But is it possible that none die from Hamas? If 212 die, what? Hamas, they are not hurt at all? So 212 is what they announce. And this is one location. And then 20 people here. So total, according to Hamas, of 232 people, equal to four Israeli. This is not include Hamas. And I assure you, if Hamas, God knows how many. We don't know. We don't. Those those people, they don't, they don't say how much they lost. They claim they have no lose. You know, always the enemy is the one who lose. They don't lose. So, how in the world that this is a victory for Hamas? When you have 
four of your enemy and most of them they are you know old you know people and then you have hundreds from your side not to mention your missiles did not even like I saw one of those missiles fail in the bathroom hardly broke the window they can make fire they can you know hardly they can kill I mean after three four thousand missiles you killed only four Israeli and the rest are either Arab Muslims or they are people working in Israel and you claim victory now, that is the logic of uh, Hamas but here is the question for anyone uh, who believe in Hamas as long Hamas is victorious why you accept ceasefire <laughs> you know what I mean you see we understand why uh, Netanyahu accepts ceasefire first he is not a real leader secondly the the Russian put the pressure on him the American put the pressure on him the French everybody put pressure on them right okay we understand because he is not a lead leader he's a potato so he don't want to be in trouble with the international community a real leader he don't care you know I mean the Russian they said to me you better stop I said to them you better stop otherwise I'm going to send weapon to Ukraine I know was your pain right now I can send them weapon they can screw you up and actually this is part of their agreement that you don't arm Hezbollah we don't arm Ukraine <laughs> so they have weakness same for America you know Joe Biden he can speak too much about going against Netanyahu but he can do nothing because all of us we knew that if I say maybe 85 to 90 percent of the American supporters well I will not be exaggerating so Biden himself he knew that it is red line for him not red line for Israel you know all this uh, talk and stupid talk like you know Congress uh, 25 Congress they sign against Israel 25 there's nothing that's nothing in America compared to the number of the Congress that's nobody you know so all of us we knew that if Netanyahu is a strong person he will not accept this ceasefire because it is not a ceasefire tomorrow is going to you know something will happen and now they will they will shoot at you again and and then what what you accomplish exactly and now they are claiming victory let us show you some of the Muslim statements in Twitter <clears throat> This is from Twitter. I just opened Twitter. The invader was humiliated. The invader arrogance was broken. And the invader was defeated. But the invader did not invade. <laughs> you know, all of us, we knew that this is a country have endless numbers of nukes. They don't even need to invade you if they want to you know, destroy you. As long as this is an enemy and this is a war, in war there is no really no mercy. So if they decide to vanish you, they can vanish you. All of us we knew that, and you are no match for them. And as long as the invader are uh, defeated, why you don't attack and take uh, Jerusalem? Hey Hamas, as long you are victorious, why you want to stop? Why you don't good going and take Jerusalem? Do we have any Muslim want to answer? As long as you are victorious, why do you want to stop? I mean, I never heard of somebody, he is victorious, he accepts his fire. Isn't it this is against the Quran? Isn't it the Quran says, cry not for peace when you are the uppermost? So when you cry for peace, only when you are not the uppermost, when you are under the shoes. So even the Quran defeat you and prove that you are a fraud because the Quran forbid you to sign for peace with the enemy if you are the uppermost and we knew that this is supposedly Hamas is a very religious terrorist organization and they will not go against the Quran right and don't tell me that the leaders of Hamas do not know this verse so be not weak and ask not for peace from the enemy of Islam okay you see the Quran saying seek not, don't be weak the one who seek ceasefire is weak the Quran says so do you see it 
Yes, do you read with me? Is it me who says the word weak? Is it me who says don't be weak and seek cease fire? <laughs> so if you are victorious, you donkey. Potato. Why you seek is when the Quran says to you, don't be weak. So those who seek cease fire with the enemy of Allah, they are weak. The Quran says that. Do you see it? Can you read Muslims? Hey Muslims, do you know how to read or are like your prophet? Arrogant, ignorant. So this is always how the Muslims they do. In the war, when they lost Jerusalem, they claim victory. Until now, every Islamic country is around Israel. They claim they have a they have a celebration for the war 1973, October 6. Egypt celebrate that, Syria celebrate that, Jordan celebrate that. And what what victory? You lost all of Sinai, and the Syrian they lost all the Julan. <laughs> the land that the Syrian they lost to the Israeli in that war is bigger than Lebanon. And they claim victory. The land the, 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 the Egyptian they lost with Israel is bigger than Lebanon and Syria together. And they claim victory. Half of Jordan is gone. And Jordanian claim victory. So we are used to this garbage, you know, with always. Have you ever heard of somebody, a Muslim, he debated Christian prince and he lost? They always claim victory. And not only that, even the one who did not debate me, he won because uh, he don't debate me face to face. Why don't go to the Israeli and you know, fight him face to face? Mr. Victory, hiding under the children's and other women, under the skirt of women. So when I see the comments in, uh, in Twitter, look at this woman here. Rise the sign of victory. We did not celebrate Eid, but soon celebrate liberation of Palestine. Oh, okay, good luck. Actually, I heard this since I was in the diaper. When my mom, she was changing my diaper, I'm an infant, I, I used to hear the victory speeches. You know? I remember one, the teacher, he says, the Jews are coward. So really? He said, yeah, they are coward, you know, if you attack them, they run away. I said, ah, so why, sir, why we run away from Jerusalem? <laughs> as long as they are coward. <laughs> and you scream at them, they run away. Okay, so, I mean, that's very simple. Let us scream at them and they run away. But what I see is the opposite. You know, Hezbollah celebrate victory when the Israeli they would draw from Lebanon. But you idiot, they were there for 20 years. <laughs> and they are not there to occupy the country, they are there to kick your ass, and they did. They kick Yasser Arafat, and they kick all his fighters, more than 30,000 fighters, they shipped them in a boat. And yet they claim victory. And don't take me wrong, by the way, Netanyahu is an idiot. I hope he will never be in the office again. And I pray that Israel is going to have a real leader. So next time when they send their missiles on you, you teach them how to behave. You, you go in the ground and you grab those rats, terrorists, from their nest under the ground. Hiding behind women and children is not an excuse. Imagine you have a criminal, he go inside an apartment and the apartment full of women and children. So that what? We let him go? No. Nobody do that. This is what Netanyahu now is doing. This guy, all what he cared for, he had enough to gather some support for being a prime minister again. Because now Israel is trying to choose which one. They gave him a chance for his time to be the prime minister. He could not get enough support. And he's hoping now he will get enough support. But if I am an Israeli, I will never support this idiot. Because obviously he is not fit for the job. Not only he's corrupt, he is not fit for the job. You know, the first Friday after the attack, Israel announced 
that they are going to uh, do ground the TV, the Israeli TV announced a ground attack on Hamas. Hamas, all of them, they hide under the ground. All and all, everybody go quiet and silence. Everybody. Oh boy, the Israeli are coming. And then later, we found out that it was just a trick because they want them to gather under the ground in certain place so they can bomb them. Okay, a good trick, nice. I like that. You know? We tell them we are coming, the rats they hide under the ground, and then we know where they are going to hide, and then we bomb them. Very nice trick. And what after that? I mean, what, what is accomplished right now? The, the, the Hamas, they lost hundreds of fighters, okay, but this is for them is not a big deal because, you know, they have, the whole population there is not working. And women there, they have babies every day. And you kill one terrorist, there's a, a, a 12. As long as you did not clean all those terrorists out of Gaza and you destroy Hamas totally, and you put there somebody, you know, you want to bring United Nations force, bring them. Make Gaza strip free from weapon. No problem. This is Palestinian territory. We, we will not even come here. But we will not accept ceasefire until there is no weapon is going to be a threat on us. This is what a real leader will do. He will not negotiate with terrorists. He will not cease fire. And there's no fire to be thrown at Israel. Remember the one who starts shelling, it was not Israel, it was Hamas. So why we cease fire? So there is this honesty, uh, you know, in, in all uh, issue here. But obviously, uh, both of them they are lying. Netanyahu is a liar. He is not a trustworthy and uh, Hamas for sure they are you know what you expect They are cowards and they hide and they claim victory as usual A real fighters they go in the ground in the field and they attack the army of the Israeli which is in the front of them Why you are hiding behind houses? The answer is very simple. You are no match and you know they will destroy you so easy So what do you do? You attack people, you know, from under the skirts of women and men, right? Yeah. Uh, somebody here saying David Wood, he wanted debate face to face. Hey, Abdul, first of all, your your Abdul, he don't debate face to face, and he's a coward. He even sent a copyright to YouTube uh, to take down my video, which I get him busted. And this coward, if he dared to debate me, there's no need for face to face because even David Wood, David Wood, he never saw my face. Christians don't see my face. It's not only Muslims. So he's a coward. He's trying to fight an excuse like Hamas. Hamas. They go under the skirt of the women and they claim to be men. Hide. You know, people, they, you see, if I am in a war, let's say I am an Israeli soldier, and then you are Hamas soldier, and then you say face to face, you go, the Israeli come to your border, you don't show up. But here we are debating, there's no need for face-to-face. -face. People, they want to hear answers. We are not going to have a box matching, right? So your shake is a potato. Don't forget uh, to watch the video we made for him just yesterday and laugh at him. He claimed that he don't receive donation. When he have a big uh, sign in his website, says, please donate here. He's a potato coward, son of Muta. All of them, they avoid debating me because they are terrified. And all of them, they have one excuse face to face because they knew I don't do or go anywhere. I'm a person sit in my house, drinking my coffee, wearing my short to flip flap, flipping your profit upside down. Why want to go anywhere? What for? You want me to go all the way to San Diego? Who? Why? How do we go vacation? Have fun. Go all the way to stand in front of a table and the guy, he give me a five, the, to, 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 even to the one who ate the Quran. Your potato was terrified from David Wood to the point he got two tall guys behind him and the top of that he called him bro because I think he was afraid that David Wood would eat him the same as he ate the Quran and not only that he started flirting with David Wood he said to him you are six foot huh? MashaAllah six foot huh? I mean why, why a man wouldn't say to a man you are six foot huh? Huh? You tell me how many, how many, how many men we see them around as they are six foot? Do you walk around and you say to them you are six foot huh? Hmm? Wow, six foot? Ah, uh -huh. okay. Do you know what I'm talking, right? 
Go watch the video and die laughing. I mean, this is the enemy of Allah. He ate the Quran and you say to him, MashaAllah, you are six foot. <laughs> and you call him bro and, you, and then you give him five. So who feared this guy? I mean, if, you, if I'm talking to somebody, he's ISIS, I would say, okay, Christian Prince, maybe he's afraid they will kill him. I mean, this guy obviously is, a, is a, he's harmless, he's a mosquito. Even mosquito can do more harm. Potato. Anyway, so going back to the topic, the comment of the Muslims one after one, and even they made, they paused this clock in uh, Twitter. Look at this guy. They are posting this. Ahmed El Farisi. This is a send the clock for Israel. Your time has come. So the Muslims are not ashamed to say we are going to do genocide. In the same time, the Israeli, they're trying, they call them before they bomb a building, says, leave the building. We are going to bomb it, okay? Tell all the civilians to leave. So here you see how this war is working. There's one side is so much perfectly correct, and that is Israel. And there's a side who want to do genocide to the Jews, and it's not perfectly correct. Now, for sure, I mean, uh, head of state, they don't say that, except in Iran. Uh, like Saudi, don't dare want to say, when I kill all the Jews, uh, the Emirati prince, you will not say that, Sheikh. Bahrain, but all of them we support, uh, you know, stop the crimes against uh, against the Palestinians, you know, but in their heart, all of them, they believe in this. All of them, even those who sign an agreement with, with, with Israel, we know that. So here the problem is with the Israeli government that until now, they don't understand that there's no peace agreement will bring you peace. There's no peace agreement will bring you peace because simply they are forbidden. The Muhammadan, they are forbidden to have peace with you. When the ambassador today of Israel, he spoke in the United Nations. Finally, somebody is being smart. So he showed him a sign, or let us say a post by Hamas and by the Palestinian Muslims, the Muhammadan. What this post is saying, let us hear. Somebody saying you sound like favor killing children. It is the opposite, my friend. It is you who favor killing children, son of Muta. It is you who is shilling over buildings without calling them to leave. The Israeli, they call those terrorists and they say if there is a civilian leave, and then everybody leave, including children and women and terrorists. It is you who sent 3,000 missiles over cities, and you are talking about protecting children. Get out of here, son of Muta, coward. Fake? You are a prostitute. You know, prostitute, they have more dignity than you. So they go, they attack you. They, th they, they throw 3,000 shells in the top of your head. And then they says, you sound like your favorite killing children. It is you who attack first. And it is you who is sending your muscles over cities. And if not the Israeli, they have the most high-tech advanced Defense system, God knows how many they will die. We have more than 3,000 rockets. How many of them you send them over an army facility? All of them, they are coming over cities. So you coward. You give yourself a license to kill their children. But when they hit you back, you cry and you claim to be a victim. And this is what those Mohammedan they do. This is what they do, those Mohammedan. Like this uh, Uthman, we made the video for him, he go crying for it. Uh, 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 what his name? The admin? Post, post the video please, the one you made for him yesterday, who said he don't take donation, and we laugh at him. Tell your Uthman, I want this coward Uthman, son of Muta, to be brave, if he is really a brave man, he is not a coward, he is not wearing warha. All of you, not only Uthman, to print what your prophet said. Are you ashamed of what your prophet said? Muslims, are you ashamed of what your prophet said? If you are really men, I want you to go in every city in USA and to print this in a big sign and walk with it. All of you are coward and you are wearing burqa. 
you don't even dare to say what your prophet said this is how coward you are and the infant care is Muhammad let me show you here we have here Farina Kamal saying infant killer hey Farina is it true that your prophet he do gen did genocide to the Jews let me show you coward son of Muta see it's okay for them to kill everybody it's okay to kill children and infant it's not okay for you to fight back this is your filthy prophet killing the Jews and anyone who have little hair around his pubic area a child they slaughter him do you see it do you see it son of Muta this is what your prophet did your prophet he killed boys he killed infant he killed children and when they even his terrorist the gang of Muhammad in his time they said to him we are killing the children in the attack he said they are from them so in YouTube in Facebook they claim that they are coming from a good religion who is against killing babies and children when their prophet is the biggest criminal in history and he is the first ISIS member And as you see, we don't make speeches here. We show you what your prophet taught. So let us see who is the baby killer. If the Jews want to kill your babies, they will kill you all, not only your babies. Who's going to stop them? They have they have weapon nobody have. If the Jews really want to kill all those who live there, who is going to stop them? You tell me. Erdogan? Huh? Pakistan? Erdogan who's making speeches? Iran? Just last year, Israel attacked Hezbollah more than three, three, uh, 300 to, four, to 400 times, which means almost every day, or maybe more sometime. So, they play victims always. And because of their huge number in this world, and they support each other. So, the overwhelming of the Israeli who they are a few millions. The Israeli not only they are a few millions, even there's a lot of Christians against them too. There's a lot of donkeys there claim to be Christians. So the reality is the opposite. Muhammad is a terrorist. And look, I'm glad that today finally the ambassador of Israel he post what Hamas they post in their uh, propaganda machine. Here is a quote from the Hamas charter. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it just as it obliterated others before it. Which means the same as we killed the Jews before, we will kill the Jews again. The same we killed their children and we raped their women, we will do it again. And yet they claim that they are the one who is the victim. Do you see? <laughs> Continue. And it continues, the day of judgment will not come until Muslims fight the Jews and kill them. Well, he forgot to mention, you see, he's being politically correct too. He forgot to say that the filthy Muhammad is the one who said that. Why you didn't say that? Why you didn't say that the filthy Muhammad, son of Muta, the animal Muhammad is the one who said that? Eh, politics. Nobody want to say the truth. This is Islam. So they want to kill everybody. They want to kill all the Christians. They want to kill all the Hindus. They want to kill all the, the Buddhas, all the atheists, all the gays, all the lesbians, all, 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 and then they play victims. They shoot at you, and then when you spank them badly, they cry, and they say, we are victims, killing our women and children. And the funny, they claim victory. I mean, if they are if they are baby killers, 
And you anyway, you are a victorious. Why you go and go and take Jerusalem? Why you why you accept ceasefire? The Israeli accept ceasefire because they are a government. There's a lot of pressure on them, the American, the Russian, everybody. You you are not a government. Why you stop? If as long as you are victorious. Have you ever heard of somebody victorious? He accepts ceasefire when this is even against the Quran. Isn't it your stupid Quran says seek not peace when you because this is a sign of weakness? And this is the verse in the front of you, chapter 47, verse number 35. So be not weak and ask for peace from the enemies of Islam while you have in the upper hand. So even the Quran confirmed that there is no way you have the upper hand. You are a coward. Islam teach you to be a coward, saying, if you are a potato, seek peace. If you are upper hand, don't. So to make it simple, uh, Sheikh Otman, don't use the word dogs there. There's no need for dogs. We respect dogs. Dogs are loyal and they are very good animals. Don't use it. I challenge you, those who support Hamas, to ask Hamas to continue their war against Israel as long as they are victorious. I never heard of somebody is victorious and he sees fire. If I am a Hamas member, God forbid, and I am victorious, I will go and take Jerusalem. Not only Jerusalem, I will take Tel Aviv. Not only Tel Aviv, I will take Washington DC. Rome, who is who's holding you? Potato. You beg for it. You are the one who contacted the Egyptian. The Egyptians are Muslim. They are not Christians. They are the one who contacted the Israeli. Say, let us cease fire. It's not the Israeli who contacted the Egyptian. It's not the Israeli who says, okay, let us cease fire. So you ask every country in the world to ask Israeli to cease fire. When they cease fire, you claim victory. Have you ever heard of a joke like this before? I heard. Islam is always like this. They get screwed, and then they claim victory. They lose Jerusalem, they claim victory. They lose the Julian Heights, they claim victory. They lose Sinai, they claim victory. They lose the river of Jordan, they claim victory. They, they lose Tabaria, they, lose, they claim victory. They lose south of Lebanon, they, lose, they always they claim victory. And by the way, in case you do not know, ISIS claim victory in Syria and Iraq. Until now, there's videos of them claiming victory. <laughs> yeah that's it they claim victory so we knew we knew how uh, how this uh, work you know uh, there's a lot of funny stupid things around us but the hate is always is the one which has come in the top of the water so their hate is blinding them and they want to destroy Israel they want to kill every Israeli and then the word judge Israel for attacking back because simply Israel is a state and those are supposedly weak people. Look at this. Mshari Rashid bin Yusuf. This guy is from the Gulf, eh, mostly from Saudi Arabia. Ra is the sign of victory. Okay. Perhaps it was not the end of Israel, but led the foundation stone to for this end foundation stone to this end Israel right now can end the existence of your country and the country of the neighbor of your country and the neighbor of your neighbor 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 neighbor, neighbor country all of us we knew that it is you Muslims who kiss the shoes of the Israeli to protect the, to protect you from Iran why the Prince of Emirat signed peace agreement with Israel what happened don't you want to make victory one after one, Erdogan, he, uh, he, the, the, the trade business with Israel increased 230 times or percent, sorry, than other years this year between Turkey and Israel. Seven thousand billion, seven, sorry, seven, seven billion dollars is the total trade. Most of it is selling steel to Israel, which means all the missiles you see is made by the steel of Turkey. 
So in TV you say something, but in reality you did the opposite. And all of us we knew that. Hamas are wanted by the Israeli by the Israeli government. But Hamas is wanted by the Saudi, what for what reason? Hamas is wanted for uh, Egyptian, what for reason? What reason? I mean, okay, the Israeli are evil, right? Why the Egyptian they want to kill Hamas? Why Saudi Arabia want to kill Hamas? Why Emirat? Why Bahrain? Why Syria? All of them they want to kill Hamas. But in TV they are not. <laughs> so, my friend, when you say, when you see Muslims like the Muslims, they gather themselves in Detroit. Uh, almost 200,000 people supposedly they gather from everywhere they come to Detroit. But you forgot Detroit have more than 10 million. So if there is, you were able to gather 200,000, well, there's tons of millions that did not go out to tell you we are with Israel. And the proof of that is election. Who care about what you say? In the heart of Detroit, you could not even make election to work for you. This is how weak you are. So, if you claim victory, you don't cease fire. You see, Israel cannot claim victory too, because simply they just, you know, use computer games. They did not even do any real attack on Gaza. They just, you know, let us say, it's like doing a training. And actually, I believe this, this, uh, this kind of uh, attack made by Hamas, it was a great uh, thing to happen to Israel. And I will tell you why. You see, the Israeli have the, the doom protection system. And supposedly this is enough, right? But the Israeli notice now, they learn that if you have a huge amount of missiles coming at you in the same time, especially from a short distance, what we have right now is not enough. So right now, Israel is going to, to prepare for the coming war, real war, not like this one with Hamas. Hamas, war with Hamas is not a war. All of us, we knew that. That Israel can finish them in five minutes if they want. But just for the sake of the children of the women and the civilians, they did not finish them all. Otherwise, they don't even need to go to war. When uh, uh, Churchill, his city was attacked, he attacked back those cities and he demolished them. They demolished literally cities. So if Israeli went to the worst point and you want to destroy their cities, well, they have the right to defend themselves, eye for an eye. If this is what you want, and you know that you are no match. They can destroy you, your Gaza, they can destroy Syria, they can destroy Jordan, they can destroy Egypt, they can destroy, they can finish you all. With no even with, with, with no need to go to war. It doesn't even take them 30 minutes. None of you have weapon like them. And your weapon, all of it is a joke compared with what they have. So I'm not worried about Israel. I'm worried about the leaders of Israel. I don't want to see in Israel a leader like this Netanyahu. I hope that by the coming week we will find or we will, we will have a new prime minister to Israel. And this guy, he will not cease fire if the terrorists do what they did now again. He will not stop until he cleaned them. He grabbed them from their, from their asses like rats. He sent his troops and grabbed them under the ground. We don't want civilian to be hurt, but if they are hiding in the civilian, well, you have no choice and, uh, but to go and get them. If a criminal, he hide behind a women and children's in an apartment and he is wanted, do you let him go? No, the police will go, even if there is women and children. Even though the target is not the children's, it's not the women, and they knew there is a risk. But this is the fault of the criminal, who he hide behind the women and the children, not the one who is going after the criminal. If the criminal is a man, he will not even hide between buildings and houses. But because they are cowards, they do that. So, I don't want to keep it long, as you know, like, I cannot sit for long. Uh, this is what happens when you carry heavy stuff alone. You know, you think you are a hero. Uh, you know, <laughs> and now you know it's really it hurt, but anyway. So I hope soon we will be back to normal, and I will be able to sit for long, normally, uh, so we can stay longer. Even though, like now, I said supposedly I will stay, I will make a short video, but even the short video is not short. So my friend, let us pray for Israel to fight all the deception against it, and there's a lot of deception against Israel. 
even done by some who call themselves Christians. I am an Arab Christian and I say, this is the land of the Jews. And anyone who deny that, he is no Christian. Anyone who claim to be a priest or a bishop and he deny what is written in the Bible, he is no Christian. Anyone who do not know history, he is a donkey. Even the stupid Muhammad himself, he agreed that the one who built the temple, who Muslim they call it Al-Aqsa, it was David and his father. Even the stupid Muhammad. Can you believe it? Even the stupid Muhammad, the top stupid guy, the one who he think, the one have orgasm first will control the baby gender. Even the stupid Muhammad, he agreed and he admit, and he said, was narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr, that the messenger of Allah, when he saw, when Suleiman, Ibn David, Dawood, which means the son of David, finished build, building Baytul Maqdis. Do you see it? This is Al-Aqsa, according to Muslims. Who is the one who finished it? Who, who? David started, Sulaiman, he finished it. This is your books. Even your stupid Quran, the Quran of the Muta'ah, in chapter 5, verse number 51, uh, 21, it says it clearly that this is the land which Allah has assigned to the Jews. Why you don't quote it to your friends? You don't want them to see it? Your stupid Quran, which made by the stupid Allah, Aka Muhammad, he forgot to mention the word Palestine once. You see here, they put it between two brackets. It's not exist. This is the translation, translator ed edition. So, all my people enter the holy land which Allah has assigned to you. Who is talking? Moses. This is the holy land assigned into you. Who? The Jews. This is your book. The truth, my friend, hurt. And the problem is that the Israeli are not really good in their marketing to their, let us say, to what's happening. There's one point whatever billion one, all of them, they are one propaganda machine against four millions. And the top of that, there's a lot of fake Christians are against them too. Nobody want to share the truth. But I don't care really how many people share truth or not. Israel is strong. But Israel is weak at the same time. They have a very weak, corrupt leader. His name is Netanyahu. If I am now an Israeli, I will go and I will put him in a box and send him to America. Buy him a house in Hawaii, let him have vacation forever, never come back. Israeli, for the sake of God, get rid of this man. Choose the new one. Aren't you sick of this guy? Like what? He stayed there forever? I mean, all of Israel, there's nobody there except this idiot, corrupt man. Can't you find a real leader? You see, if they knew that you have a real leader, they will never dare to shoot at you. And now, if you keep them there, they knew now, Netanyahu, he would do nothing. They tried him already once. He did nothing. They sent their missiles at you, and he did nothing. He was just worried about how to become a prime minister again. He knew that invasion on the ground will make him lose soldiers. This is what he's worried about. He's not worried about the soldiers. He's worried about, oh, that will not be a good point for me. This week or the week after, the Israeli are going to decide who is going to be the prime minister. And this is why Hamas hit now, because they knew that this guy, all what he cared for is the chair. For the sake of God, find a real leader. Stop hiring corrupt businessmen. 
And I'm not worried about Hamas. I'm sure that sooner or later, a real Israeli leader, he will come and he will say, okay, okay, Hamas, we will make you hummus. Let us see. Time will come, my friend. And you will see. Those people will lose their patience, especially, I don't know how much patient a nation like Israel need to have, because they have all this power to demolish countries, and yet they hold themselves from demolishing Hamas. Just because they are worried about United Nations. If I am an Israeli, actually, Prime Minister, I will withdraw from the United Nations. What this United Nations is, is a bashing place. It's people who go in the stage calling each other names. At the end of the day, they make the decision, nobody follow it. Name for me one decision the United Nations took and anyone follow. Nobody follow it. <laughs> so what the, why you are worried about United Nations? Why you are worried about even America? America need you more than you need them. American, they need the Israeli technology. Not only the Israeli, they need the American technology. The most powerful defense system America have is based on Israeli weapon and Israeli technology. They cannot even let you go. They will beg you to stay. Not because they love you, they love you or not, it's not a business. Biden himself, he will say to you, please, please don't leave us. The Russian will eat us. Just to make it simple for you, the first nuke ever made is made by Jews. In case you do not know. The one who brought victory to America, it was the Jews. In case you do not know. The one who brought Japan into their knees, it was the Jews in America, in case you do not know. And if those people, they can defeat Hitler, and they can defeat Japan, and they can defeat the fascist, and they can defeat hundreds of millions, and they are not even a state. They are very small, tiny, I mean, the size of a building in some countries. So who are you to claim to, to, to have victory? You did not even reach the point. I don't want you to reach that point to see what Israel can do. Because then your cries will not help. And the United Nations will not even be enough to dry your tears. Stupidity is amazing. We knew who is the Jews. We knew how smart they are. We knew how powerful they are. At the same time, we learned how patient they are. Christian Prince, what are you talking? Israel is scared, and if I continue, maybe also Cyprus, and get ready, Cyprus will attack Israel. Cyprus could not even defend themselves against uh, Erdogan, the donkey. Get out of here. Cyprus will attack Israel. Cyprus don't even have an army, you donkey. Stupid idiot. Where do these people come from? If Cyprus, they can't do anything, first of all, Cyprus is a Christian country. Same time, Cyprus, they, they lost half of their country to the Turkish. So if those people, they can have an army and they can fight, they will fight and get their country back. But uh, give, him a, give him a toy to play and out outside, Cyprus. Idiot. Where, where are those people coming from? Cyprus will get angry. Erdogan did not dare to get angry. <laughs> Cyprus. <laughs> Oh, I love Cyprus, by the way. But I mean, sometimes people, they say stupid things. I cannot, I cannot believe it, how stupid people are. Cyprus will get angry because the missiles reach them. Oh, okay, and uh, what will happen now? I heard that Cyprus, they are going to take over America too, and Erdogan is running away. Idiot. Erdogan is, is we cannot wait no more. We cannot support this any no unjust. Okay, Erdogan, do something. Okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. 11 days every day he make a speech he did not even kick the consulate or the ambassador of Israel from Turkey he did not even stop all the agreement between the Mossad and the Turkish intelligence I mean have you ever heard of somebody he want to fight a country and he's against them and then he open for them intelligence center in their, in their cities and the Mossad is flying all over the place and they have a big spy point in Turkey in Istanbul 
So we knew how Muslim leaders are. There is something to consume for the consumers. You know, I have a bunch of goats, I have to feed them, they hate Israel. So I have to make some speeches. But in reality, I will do nothing, don't worry. Actually, who is worried anyway? All of you are the same. Look how many leaders of you make a speech. King of Jordan. This guy is a king. Are you serious? Uh, he's wearing high heels now, so he become taller. Or what about the king of Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Who could not win a war against a militant group in Yemen? You know, all of them, they gather from everywhere to bring Sunni, Pakistan, you know, they brought Muslim Sunni from everywhere. And the Shia are defeating them in Yemen. Actually, I believe strongly that the best thing Israel to do is not to have a war ever with Iran because Iran will destroy Islamic Sunni countries. You see, the Saudi, Emirat, Bahrain, Egypt, all of them, they wish that a war will happen between Iran and the Israeli. So they can sit watching, but that will not happen because Iran are the same as the rest. They have big mouth, death to America, death to Israel, but yet they will not kill one Jew. They don't dare. This is why they use those Hamas, etc., because those are militant, they don't present her. Same as the rest. They don't dare to go in war with Israel. So they bring their kids to throw rocks at you. We knew the game, right? So they make speeches in the morning and they shake hands with the Israeli afternoon, all of them, with no exception. I challenge anyone to show me one exception. There's only one exception, maybe. The Syrian and the Iranian. That's it. The rest, all of them, they are in the pocket of, of, the, of the Jews. Netanyahu went to Saudi Arabia already many times, and he met with the crown prince and the king of Saudi Arabia. What happened to the king of Morocco? What happened? What, what, what is your kings, Muslims? Literally, where is your kings? I will tell you where is your kings. They are doing masturbation. They enjoy the scenery. They get horny. All what they care for is money, corruption. And not only the king are corrupt, the people are corrupt. At least in Israel, there's election. They get rid of their corruption. There, the corrupt person stay forever. If I show you a video how the king of Morocco he walk in the street, you would think it's God. People bow down. Who dare to open his mouth? The king of Jordan, if you say one word, you and your family will disappear. Oh, not to mention the nice king of Saudi Arabia is very, very nice. To the point, if you go to his embassy, he will make you shish kebab. And nobody will find you after that. <laughs> oh, not to forget Erdogan. If you are a guy who, who, who collect garbage, and then, he, they, you know... <laughs> Imagine there's a guy, he is he's a garbage cleaner. He's a garbage cleaner. Somebody said to him, uh, you don't like, you sound happy. He said, well, don't you see the salary? This Erdogan destroy our life. The guy disappear. He's a garbage cleaner, let the guy live. And they complain about Israel. Have you ever heard of an Israel that somebody, he said something against Netanyahu, he disappear? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so, you know, we go in the Middle East, we are Middle East, and we knew how it is. We die laughing when they claim victory. And I hope that all your victory is like this. Because if all your victory is like this, that means you will never win. I pray to God that all your victory is like the victory today. <laughs> For if this is victory, then what is lost and defeat? And this is my challenge to the Muhammadan. If you are already victorious, I want you to refuse to stop the ceasefire, to refuse the ceasefire. I never heard of somebody is victorious, he accepts ceasefire. Continue and take Jerusalem. Take me here. Jerusalem is waiting for you, brother, sisters. Why you are waiting? Oh, we need to cease fire because we need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> a 
brother, but see, the Quran says, you know, the Quran brother says, you, you should not tease fire with the kuffar as long as you are of the upper hand. Seek not, don't be weak, brother. The Quran says so. My friend, what Quran, what potato, what tomato? If we attack them now, they will make us shish kebab. So let us claim victory and cease fire, and that's it. Otherwise, we will be shish kebab. Hey, brother, do you think if we attack them and we like invade Jerusalem now, what will happen? Brother, we will arrive there, I guarantee you, but not walking. <laughs> hey, Abdul, it's a challenge for you. As long as you made victory, why you stop? Continue your victory, please. Take Jerusalem. The main point is Jerusalem. Let us see if your dream will come true. It's a challenge for you. All of you are a bunch of cowards, those who claim that they can fight Israel, and reality is in the front of our eyes. Your kings, they go to the United Nations to scream. Do you know why? Because they are not men to do what they dream to do. You go to the Kufar land asking Biden to support you. You know why? Because you have no daddy and he is your daddy. Men who have honor, they will not go to someone like Biden, who just signed an agreement to give Israeli $370 million of weapon, smart weapon. He just signed it two days ago. This is how much humiliation you have for yourself. People of victory, they will not ask the French and the German and the Italian and even the Pope to get involved and ask for ceasefire. And when they do ceasefire, after all what you beg for it, you claim victory. We love. So I am happy for you for your victory, and I hope your coming victory will be the same. But I hope next time the victory you will claim is going to be not with Netanyahu. It's going to be someone else, let us see. So thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. I wish I can stay long, but uh, that is enough for today. As you see, I have an injury. One of the missiles of Hamas fell in the... Fell in the <laughs> I remember once I, I saw a member of Hamas, and uh, actually not not member of Hamas, a member of the, 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 at that time it was like... Uh, uh, you know, Yasser Arafat, not Hamas. There was no Hamas. So, uh, he had no hand. So I said to him, what happened? Where is your hand? He said, the Israeli took it. The Israeli took it? How did you took it? Like what? They, you were prisoner? They cut it off for you? They said, no. They did not even, you know. So, so what happened? How the Israeli took it? He said, I was trying to make a bomb for the Israeli and exploded me. I said, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the coward. He is making a bomb to kill the Israeli, and the Israeli cut his hand. So he go around. He says the Israeli took it. So he want to be. He want to claim to be a hero. He did not. He said, "I never even get close to them." He's making a bomb. Funny bomb, in the kitchen, and psh, took his hand. And he go around, he tell people that he was, he was a hero, and the Israeli took his hand. And I will not be surprised if Hamas, the interview him, says, one of our heroes who lost his hand by the Israeli. And then Israeli, and then Muslim women, they start posting video. Look at this poor guy, the Israeli took his hand. Tell us about your hand. Who took it? The Israeli. Right? I like it. Right? Uh, you have a guy to like to to debate me? Oh, okay. He always say he blocked him. That's mean he's a kid. I block only kids. Give me give me somebody. He is a sheikh. Somebody is a scholar. Somebody have a long beard. You know something longer than my socks. All right. Don't give me kids. Anyway, so I'm so happy for you, Muslim, for your victory. And as long as we keep Jerusalem, and this is what victory for you, that's wonderful. <laughs> brother, we lost Jordan, brother. Yeah, we have victory. Brother, we lost Jerusalem. Yes, brother, we have victory. 
Brother, we lost, we lost Sinai. This, brother, we have victory. Brother, we lost the, the, the east of Jordan, the river, river of Jordan. Yes, brother, we have victory. <laughs> brother, uh, we, we lost. Uh, brother, we never lose, brother. We are Muslims. We never lose. Brother, I saw you losing when you were playing chess. First of all, chess has haram. But I saw you playing chess. Okay, you want to bet that betting is haram? This is the mentality of those Muhammadan. They want to bet, you want to bet that betting is haram. So they claim that they are against gambling, but they gamble. They gamble with their children, they gamble with their future, they gamble with their with their society, with their cities, with their towns, and they gamble with everything. And then when they lose, they claim victory. So you want to bet that betting is haram? I bet that betting is haram. Do you bet against me? If you bet against me, don't forget to bet. Thank you all. May the Lord bless you. How is the son of Hamas? I don't know. I never met him. Yeah, this is a great example. Actually, the, there's one thing I appreciate about the, the Israeli intelligence, that they have a lot of details about Hamas members. And they were able to kill a lot of their leaders in this you know, 11 days. You see, they have a very amazing intelligence. I, I, I never saw really any country in the world, they have such intelligence as the Israeli. In the same time, look like Hamas, because they knew the Israeli are so powerful with their intelligence, they dig so deep down to save their muscles from the attack by airplanes. Uh, anyway, uh, God is good, and we are happy for you Muslims, for your victory. And remember the Quran says, so be not weak and ask for peace when with the enemy when you are the uppermost. Obviously, you don't have the upper hand. Obviously, the Israeli have the upper hand, and this is why you seek peace temporarily. And next time you attack, my friend, I hope that the one who will be in the office is not the potato Netanyahu. I hope is going to be a real Israeli warrior who will teach you how to behave, who will teach you that the thrower rocks is not the same as a throwing missiles who will teach you what it's mean to be in war and then let us see who's going to help you united nation america let us see nobody there and when i say nobody there i know what i'm saying thank you god bless you and enter we'll see you soon again christ is lord i will keep this video for maybe an hour or two and then take it down feel free to download it share it with your friends and enter we'll see you again we say Viva Israel, victory for those who keep Jerusalem, not those who claim they will have Jerusalem. Keep claiming. You were saying the same since 70 years ago. Victory for those who have Jerusalem now in their hand, not the one who claim they will have it one day. Good luck. Good luck. Take care, God bless, and see you soon again. Bye-bye.